we used to, the, when I was your age, the majority of graphing was done with standalone um, programs, right? So you bought a specific program and there were many, many different versions. There were versions for PCs, versions for Macs, all this kind of stuff. That world has primarily changed. And while those things still exist, JMP and, and the like, the numbers, there used to be in the dozens and dozens of possible tools you could have access to. Most of that has gone away. And that's, um, and, and it's mostly converted to a smaller number of programs, um, many of which are platform independent. Uh, there was, so was it, Ben was just asking about SPSS, I think, right? Or somebody, yeah, so, so we had a program that got really big. The computer coding language that was created to support that, which was originally created by IBM in the 70s or something, I think, that language was called S, just, just the letter S. And that became the, the backbone for um, some of these most popular uh, desktop-based graphing tools. Um, and then in the 90s, some professors got ticked off that it was getting more and more and more expensive, but it was what everybody used. So it started with these guys in Australia, uh, sorry, not Australia, New Zealand. They said, why don't we create our own language, but from the start, make it open source so nobody can patent it, so nobody can um, you know, sell it exclusively back to folks. So they did that. So it took, it took a while, but essentially that's what we have now, and that's why, the, um, the, that's why you guys have heard of the language R, and they just picked R's because it was you know, S. Okay, we're going to call it R. There's no other fancy term than that. Um, and so... That's gotten very powerful um, with a lot of plugins, but that is, and that's open source, but a lot of the open source stuff has gone command line, which is very powerful, but it does help us, but we do have to do some you know, computer programming and, and that sort of level of stuff. Um, many of you are more familiar with um, drop downs and graphical user interfaces. And so that's how Plotly started. So it's plot. The, the official, the original website was plot.ly and originally it was all 100% on the browser and now it's gotten, it's gotten big in, um, in business intelligence, sort of real-time software. So this program was designed to make graphics uh, online first. Everything else historically or historically all these programs were designed to be printed on a printer, on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Uh, this and pretty much most of our <clears throat> online tools now are, start, are, are generated to be online first and then are sort of downgraded to a stagnant or still image uh, for, for printing. And so, um, so before you guys, so everybody just look up here and, and then we'll, we'll get you guys logged on. So basically, um, this is this legacy feed here. And so this is this Plotly. It's called Plotly Chart Studio. And so I've already created an account. I've logged in. We can see my names here and everything. So once you guys get going in a second, you'll do that. But let me just show you what it looks like. So I'm going to hit Create Chart. And I have this space. And so this space might look similar to you from some other tools you've used. We have essentially a tabular a rows and, and uh, columns of of data up here. And then we have a win and then this there's there's some command there's some menu options that'll show up here in a second. And then we have the the graph field, right? There's all kinds of options. Primarily for our class, we're mostly going to use uh, x and y uh, plots, right? You could use other things, but primarily we're going to use um, you know, this variable depending on that variable. Uh, line chart a line or a scatter plot or something of that nature. And so um, we and and they in the language of Plotly instead of like, the other annoying thing with all these graphing programs is everybody has to invent their own term for like the same thing. But so so instead of saying the graph here, they call it a trace. So okay, a trace. Um, and basically down here on the left are going to be all of our all of our things we can tweak. And so that's just going to be one where you guys need to just play around for a while and just sort of experiment, see where things are and stuff. Okay, but so, so I can either type in data, and if I just type 3, 4, 5, 7, 9, 12, whatever, I'm just making up some data here. 1, 2 point, oops, uh, point 2, point 5, 6, point 3, 7, right? Um, uh, I have, so now I have some data in, can everybody see this? Is this okay? Is this big enough? Should I make it bigger? Is that better? 
Okay, so I've just, I've just manually typed this in, but note you can uh, copy and paste from say Excel or Google Sheets. You can import a file. So there's multiple ways, all the ways you would think you could get data in here, it's, you can. But just for illustrative purposes here, um, I have you know, some data here and some data here. So I'm gonna say, all right, Plotly, let's make an XY plot. So I'm gonna say, let's make a trace. And then I can come up here and I can pick what I wanna do. Do I wanna do a, and if I click this, I can do a scatter plot, a bar, and you know, and I'm just gonna say scatter to start with. What's my X data? I pull down here, I want my X data to be A, and, my, and this guy to be B. Now note, I can also come up here, click this little triangle, and change my header and say this is, I don't know, age. And this is, I don't know, um, uh, uh, height, right? Whatever it is. And so note, note as I change that, it changes here. So it's a dynamic thing, right? So the stuff is linked, okay? And, and again, this is my data frame and this is my figure or, or my visualization frame. And so I've typed this in, I'm like, okay, and now here's my stuff. Now, because this is online first, it's gonna dynamically resize stuff, right? So now if I come in here and I make this guy be bigger, check it out, it's gonna, it's gonna stretch, right? Or if I make my window you know, like this, it's gonna stretch it out, right? And so, because the code, oh, what happened? Where'd I go here? Where'd I go, where'd I go, where'd I go? Okay, because my code is dynamic, right? So, so because it's, it's an online tool first, um, if, I, if I zoom in or whatever, it might look funky. So I can always hit the home button and jump back to the default, default uh, range, et cetera. Okay, and um, now the other nice thing about this is, uh, now, now it's, it's gotten, it's, it's changed over the years. So when they made this and we started using this 10 years ago or so when they were first coming out, they were very excited that we were one of the first universities to use this tool. Um, and they, they promised that uh, this would never, uh, would always be, would always have a public facing, uh, uh, <laughs> would always be public facing, at least an element of it, right? So that it will never cost money. Um, now they're a company to make money. So what's happened over the years is some of the functionality has changed with the free version, right? And in fact, now this is sort of an afterthought, what we're doing right now. So now they're primarily working with um, Python, these coding platforms and stuff like that. And, and so they're, they're doing great. But this simple, basic uh, 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 browser-based data interface is, is not really their priority. So you'll find when you go to save it, there'll be a million options, but you can only access a few, but that's fine. You can export it as a PDF, which is, which is good enough for our class, right? Um, and probably good enough for most presentations and stuff as well. Um, uh, so anyway, so, so I'll just note that. The other great thing is with this is it's like a Google Docs for graphing. So we don't have with uh, say R or some of these other things, you make it, right? So Sebastian makes it and then Molly wants to look at it and like, what? Yeah, you have to go to his computer or whatever, right? Or you have to save the file, save all the components, email it to you, then you have to email it on your computer. So what you can do with this is you can add collaborators. You can add folks that can just view it, or you can add, like if you're doing a group project, all three of you guys could be on the same document and you could be just like with a Google, so like with like a Word document or a, or a Google Sheets with data where you guys are all simultaneously tweaking it, editing, you could, you, you could do that. Or um, you could make it yourself and then send it to your buds that night and they can edit it after, you know, so that kind of stuff. So, so it's much more collaborative than some of our other tools. Um, um, okay, right. And so, and just like everything else or any other good program, I can come on here and I can, um, I can you know, change all this kind of stuff, right? So one, I can, I can do some just by clicking on here, and this is, what did I say this was? This was uh, height, right? So I can, I can just click on this and, and, and edit stuff. I can also edit that from within this menu. I can also uh, you know, change the color of things. I don't like that color, I want it, I want it to be this color, and I want it to be bigger, and all, all that kind of stuff you can typically do, okay? So the general idea that we're gonna be working on um, for our visualizations is to make sure that we're communicating something very clearly, right? And so that's gonna mean, um, firstly, before we make a figure, probably plotting it out in our heads. Like, what? I think I wanna look at this variable, 
See if this variable is dependent on that variable, or okay, I want this and that, and you know that kind of stuff. As with most of these programs, you you can manipulate the data inside of this of this uh, viewer, but it's it's a little bit limited. So if you wanted to clean up your data, my suggestion is to clean up all the data in some other tool, either Google Sheets or Excel or something like that, and then bring in the data data ready to be graphed. You don't have to, but it just makes it a little uh, you know. The, the strength of this program is not data cleaning, it is data visualizing, cool? The other nice thing about this is, it, okay, one other thing I have to say is, all the stuff you save in this, um, in recent years, is public. You used, we used to have the ability to have it be public or private, not a big deal, we're, we're, we don't have any sensitive data here, we're not having like public health data or something like that, so that's okay. Um, but if you go to save something or whatever, it might say, oh, you have to save this first. And if you try to save it as private, it'll say, oh, you don't have permission to save private, but you can save it as public. Okay? Um, so, uh, so then maybe this first step will just be, I'll, I'll pause for a moment and um, encourage everybody to uh, create an account and, um, and then to uh, uh, log on and, and just play around for a minute or two just so people can get a, a, a general feel for what this, um, and see if you can make a, you know, a, a graph or a figure or something like that. Cool, Molly?